Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and in this video more information about the upcoming Zwift Hub Smart Trainer. It has been the talk of the forums since its announcement a few weeks back and with that a lot of questions have come through. So I've collated 15 of the top questions. I have answers for all of those. So if you're looking to make a purchase in the near future or you're holding back on purchasing something else until we know more about this, this video may assist. Now before getting stuck into the 15 questions, what we know so far about this trainer, US 499 comes with a cassette pre-selected on ordering so it can match your bike, but more on that in a moment. It is based on the Jet Black Volt Smart Trainer with improvements to the firmware and the unboxing and setup experience. And it will be available in a few weeks time, early October 2022 in the US, UK and EU. There's the overview, let's get stuck into the 15 questions that I've seen asked around the internet. Number one, can the Zwift Hub Smart Trainer be used with other platforms? And the answer is yes, absolutely it can. The Zwift Hub supports Ant Plus Power, Ant Plus Speed Cadence, Ant Plus FEC, and Bluetooth FTMS, which means it will work with any other software that supports those protocols and any other controlling hardware, such as a Garmin Edge. So you're good to go there. Question number two following on from that, does the Zwift Hub require an active paid subscription to Zwift to work? And the answer to that is no, you don't need an active paid subscription to Zwift. The Zwift Hub can be configured and updated with a trial account using the companion app that is similar to Wahoo, Elite, Tax, and Jetpack themselves who also require you to log into their companion app to configure and update their trainers. So no difference there. Spin down calibration can be performed within Zwift with a trial account. And Zwift say they are working on a firmware update for the Zwift Hub that has auto calibration, so you won't need to do that for spin down. Question number three, is the supplied 12 speed cassette, if you choose that on ordering, compatible with SRAM access flat top chains? These ones right here. The answer there is technically no. The flat top chains have a larger roller size than Shimano chains. So the best option to go for if you're running Red Force Rival Axis is to get yourself the XDR driver or free hub and a 12 speed SRAM cassette. That is an additional purchase. Now, if you want to try running the flat top chain with the supplied 12 speed cassette, it may work. It may work fine, but technically it is unsupported. Personally, I'd be going with the XDR driver and the correct cassette to make everything mesh perfectly and so you don't end up with any premature wear on your chain. Question number four, is there any Campagnolo compatibility? The answer here from Zwift is, at this time we are not aware of any Campagnolo Freehub bodies being available that will fit the Zwift hub. This is something we are reviewing. They say here, until this changes, Zwift hub is not compatible with Campagnolo. Now again, if you're just using erg mode and you want to accept all the responsibility of chain wear, et cetera, and maybe a few gears not working, it may work, but technically the answer there is no. Question number five, the power accuracy of only 2.5% does not meet the Zwift racing requirements. Now I've seen this posted quite a lot with a bit of ha ha, Zwift have released a trainer that you can't even race with. That's actually incorrect. It's only the very, very top tier of racing that this trainer will not be allowed in. And it's the same for a number of other trainers as well. So the Zwift Hub can be used in all community level racing, which is the target market for this trainer anyway. Look for elite sport competitions, again quoting from Zwift here, such as the UCI eSport World Champs, where the Zwift cycling eSport rules apply. No, you can't use this trainer. You will require a trainer with plus or minus 1% power accuracy. So in summary, to clear up what a lot of posts have been saying that you can't use this for racing, absolutely you can. Again, it's just the top level racing that you can't. Question number six, is the Zwift Hub compatible with the Wahoo Kicker Climb or the Elite Riser Gradient Simulators? No, because the axle at the rear of the bike is fixed on the Zwift Hub. Those devices require a pivoting rear axle, so your bike just doesn't grind away after a few ups and downs. Question number seven, is the Zwift Hub compatible with the Elite Stutterzo, Stutterzo Smart, and Jet Black Turn Block? Yes, absolutely. The steering just takes place at the front of the bike, not at the back. The back is static and fixed, so that is no problems at all with the Zwift Hub. Question number eight, what is the change made from the Volt to the Zwift Hub that accommodates more disc brake clearance? Side by siding both trainers here, the Volt on the left, the Zwift Hub on the right. The Zwift Hub has a lower profile through here, allowing for more disc brake clearance. Question nine, does the Zwift Hub fold up for storage? No, it does not. Number 10, is there a carry handle? No, no carry handle. Number 11, does it have feet that can be leveled? And no, it doesn't. With the four point design, it doesn't really matter if your floor's a little bit wonky, just jack up one side and you're good to go. I usually find leveling trainers that have the center point pivot a little harder than things with four points, so it shouldn't be an issue. Wasn't an issue here in the Llama Lab. Question number 12, does the Zwift Hub have a single or a dual Bluetooth connectivity? Single at this point in time. If you need to dual record, then Ant Plus is the way to go there. Question 13 was around the power pack details and the power usage. The power pack maximum output, 19 volts, 
1.74 amps, so just over 90 watts. That's maximum rating. It uses a lot less than that when in operation. When not in use, it's using less than one watt. That's measured here in the Llama Lab. And some interesting stats that I took whilst testing the trainer up on screen here. So 11.4 watts at 200 watts erg, 15.2 watts at 250 watt erg, but the flywheel speed does matter because the lower the flywheel speed and depending on what erg mode you set, the more power it has to draw. So 50 watts at 225 watts with a slow flywheel, 12 watts at the same power with a higher flywheel speed and only six watts, again, same power, 225 at a 50 kilometer an hour flywheel speed. So the answer to how much power this thing uses, uh, no more than 90 watts is I guess the most accurate answer. It's gonna depend. Question 14, does the Zwift hub have a sleep mode when not in use? The answer there from Zwift was no, uh, but the power draw that I measured here in the Llama Lab was less than a watt. It was about 0.8 of a watt, so definitely not a lot. Zwift recommend just switching it off at the wall when not in use. And finally today, before my voice completely gives out, question 15, do I recommend this trainer? My honest answer is no, not at this point in time until we see it in its final form, shipping out of the factory with that final firmware. I see a lot of posts online with people recommending this trainer and doing comparisons with the Kicker Core versus Swift Hub or Swift Hub versus Neo. But the truth being at this point in time, we just don't know. It is just not possible to give an informed answer on that. Look, at the very minimum, if the Zwift Hub performed identically to a Jet Black Vault, it'll definitely be a good trainer, but the Jet Black Vault wasn't without issue. Issues that still occur today here in the Llama Lab with the latest firmware. If you wanna play the long game on this one and really do some deep research, jump over to my Jet Black Vault review, where later in the data analysis, I discuss what's going on there. These things get hot, very, very hot, and heat appears to be the enemy of accuracy with this unit, so it's not perfect. Anyhow, we'll leave it there for today. Hopefully you found this informative. If so, give this a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel, and I'll be back with more information as soon as that new firmware drops on the Zwift Hub. Fingers crossed, and we'll see you soon.